Welcome back. I am so excited to share with you this section on reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is my own area of specialty, and it's one of the most powerful and general families of techniques available in artificial intelligence today. This video is going to focus on breaking down reinforcement learning. What problem is it trying to solve? How do we even approach it? Reinforcement learning is so named because we assume that there is some decision-making agent, say your website or your computer, and it learns by receiving reinforcement signals, that is positive or negative signals that tell it whether or not it's been doing something good or bad. These reinforcement signals or wards are used to direct the agent to change how it makes decisions. Each of those decisions has some set of actions available. For example, on your website, your web page, you could present it the choice. Does it show one advertisement or another advertisement? This set of actions is available to it and it needs to choose which action to take so as to maximize the reward. But it shouldn't always take the same action. It may depend on the state of the universe, or just what we'll call the state. For example, if the user is looking at a web page about books, an advertisement about books might be more effective than an advertisement for, say, shoes. And taking in that additional information is probably going to be essential to making good decisions in a reinforcement learning problem. So here's the bad news. Reinforcement learning is really hard. This is because reinforcement learning is a very general framework. Almost any decision-making problem can be cast, can be turned into a reinforcement learning problem. You could imagine reward signals from your business, like, did you make money or lose money? Did you acquire customers or lose customers? Did someone click on your advertisement or not click on your advertisement? But making decisions to maximize all of those things is really difficult in general. And so there's no one algorithm right now that's able to solve all reinforcement learning problems really well. The good news is there are simpler versions of some of these reinforcement learning problems for which there are really great solutions. And it just so happens that these versions of reinforcement learning problems are exactly the kinds of problems that we'll want to solve in our business. So what does make reinforcement learning hard? Fundamentally, it's because we have to both acquire information about the problem, about the domain that we're attempting to solve, and use the information we've gathered to maximize reward. This trade-off between acquiring more information and using the information that we've already acquired is called the exploit-explore trade-off or explore exploit. This is really different from supervised or unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, we're told what the right answer is. This would be like training your web page to show an advertisement by saying, when it's this type of user and they're on this type of page, show them this type of advertisement. The reinforcement learning setting, the computer has to do experiments. It has to test things out. It says, okay, I have this type of customer and this type of web page. I guess I'll try something and see what happens. This need for exploration makes reinforcement learning harder than supervised learning. But it's also different from unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, we just want to summarize the data. And there are lots of different ways of doing that. Whereas in reinforcement learning, there is a clear objective. We want to maximize the amount of reward that our agent gets, the amount of positive reinforcement signals that it gets. So we can't just wander around and collect a lot of data. We also need to be using that information to make smarter decisions in the future. This trade-off between collecting information and using that information is what makes reinforcement learning hard. Now you might be wondering, if this is so different from supervised and unsupervised learning, how do we even collect data? Well, because reinforcement learning is fundamentally interactive with the environment, there's no really great way of collecting data, say, statically or ahead of time. 
The only really good way to collect data for reinforcement learning is to send the agent out there and have it interact with the environment. So in general, we'll proceed by developing an agent that's able to learn from past decisions and reward signals, and we'll send it out into the world, and it will take some number of actions and see what happens. After it's collected some data, it will start trying to make predictions about what will happen, what are the consequences of the actions it takes from certain states. Depending on those predictions, it will change the way it behaves so as to increase the amount of reward it gets. And good reinforcement learning agents are constantly managing this trade-off between wanting to collect more data in case there's something even better out there, but also using what they've already learned to make pretty good decisions. So we deploy the system on our website. How do we know when it's working? How do we know when we can just leave it be and let it run? Because it's interactive, it may not be obvious when the algorithm is, say, finished. But there are a couple of things we can look for. One is, are the decisions it's making basically the same as they've been for a while? In other words, has the policy or the strategy of the agent converged? If its strategy has stayed the same for a long time, it's probably learned about as much as it can. Another thing we could do is just let it run for a really long time. And if we let it run for long enough, presumably it's learned everything there is to learn. This isn't great if you're trying to make snap decisions about how well the agent is doing, but from a business point of view, just deploying something and letting it run for a long time is not a terrible strategy. The last thing that we can do is we can try and estimate how certain an agent is in its predictions. This can give us an idea of how well it can maximize the reward in the environment. If it's very uncertain about how much reward is available or the consequences of the actions it can take, then it's probably not optimizing as much as it could be. So how do we build these confidence bounds? Suppose that we've tried an action some number of times and we've gotten a variety of different rewards. We could average them together. Let's call that mu. But then there's this question of how far off from the truth, the true average, say, could our mu be? In other words, what's the range of possible true values for making a particular action around our estimate of that, which is mu? This is called the standard error or the standard deviation in the mean. And fortunately, there's a nice formula for it that we can take from some very basic statistics. The standard error is bounded by standard deviation, or we could even bound it just by the maximum amount of error in the system, divided by the square root of the number of samples we've taken, or the number of experiments we've run. In other words, if we do four times as many experiments, our range of error will be cut in half. These kinds of confidence bounds can give us an idea of how close we are to knowing the true answer or really understanding the domain. The smaller the confidence bounds, the closer we are to having the perfect understanding of the domain. And these are really easy to compute. All we have to do is count the number of times that we've run this particular experiment. 